Station D. Barry has given them the balanced offensive attack that they didn't have early. Horrendous post-entry pass. Phillips able to just snatch it right out of the air. Well, Phillips plays bigger the, than uh, one would think. He is 6'10", but he has long arms. A terrific defender. Both his parents are pro basketball players. That's right. Uh, they met in France. Mom is a native of that country. He speaks French. Reed. Out there. And here comes Fine. Georgia Tech trailing by only six. Aikens for three. Oh, how big that would have been. And the rebound to Jameer Nelson. You're going to take a quick shot like that in the break and transition. You better get that one to go down. Closing in on the five minute mark. Change of pace, change of direction with Jameer Nelson. Beautiful to watch. Nice closeout. I tell you, by bringing LeBerry in and putting him on O'Connor, that has really helped Paul Hewitt. First time we've on inside 10 on the shot clock. <laughs> and Phillips with a line drive, but a hold against Holston Lane of Georgia Tech, his third foul. St. Joe's, which was so magnificent in the first half. They've gone four for 22, though, from three point line tonight. And here's the Verizon District, Academic All America, 3.57, majoring in finance, Bill Phillips. He was born in France, spent eight and a half years in Saudi Arabia. So, what an international experience this guy's life has been. His dad was a salesman for a multinational company in Saudi Arabia when he went down there. It's one out of two, nine points in the game for Phillips, and it's a seven-point advantage for St. Joseph's. Oh, way too tall for Alvin Jones. Two consecutive nightmarish passes trying to get the ball to Alvin Jones. Remember, he's playing with four fouls. Connor working inside and it's short. LaBerry again defensively rebound outlet. Akins to find for three. Akins gets it back. Doesn't see O'Connor and O'Connor got a piece of him. And I believe that's a three point. Yes, a three point attempt will be taken now by Marvin O'Connor on the foul. O'Connor's third and Akins to the line. So Akins. A 74% free throw shooter with a chance to make three. Well, there's a lot of talk about Tony Akins in the ACC with all the focus on Duke's Jason Williams as being one of the best point guards in all of basketball. Outside of Jason Williams, this guy, Tony Akins, just might be the best small point guard in that fine conference. That's his first point, Bill Walton, in this second half. He now has 10 for the game, averaging 14 and a half to lead Georgia Tech. But when you look at the legendary point guard out of Georgia Tech, Bobby Kramer did such a fine job. And guys like Travis Best, Kenny Anderson, the other left-handers, Tony Akins joining them, and Stephon Mark, Marbury. Mark Price. Mark Price. Well, Mark was an academic All-American. You bet he was. So the three free throws for Tony Akins and the lead now is four points. Four minutes to go. Phillips playing that high post position beautifully. Reed over Jones and Jones playing with four fouls. Couldn't be the aggressive defender that he has a reputation to be almost thrown away by Aiken. Floating passes for Georgia Tech. Paul Hewitt, he's gonna pull his hair out. Jones knocks it off his own knee, out of bounds to St. Joseph's. They lead by six. Rebounding over UCLA. Well, a key for Hofstra, they have kept the Bruins off the offensive glass. Richardson. And that may be as important as anything Jay Wright talked about. Besides handling the Bruin pressure, can we keep them off the board? UCLA has come out on Hofstra in the second half when they tried to run down the clock much more so than they did in the first half. They put more pressure in this half court set. And Hofstra
Webster has turned the ball over in the second half. But still maintain the lead. Opponent now the mismatch on Hernandez. Outside, Apodaca for two, and the rebound by Dan Zurich. Good job by Barnes to fly at Apodaca. Didn't give him an open look. Barnes at 6'7", elevated high. Watson, who didn't miss a shot in the first half, misses his second, second half shot in a row. Hernandez will drive and feed. Richardson inside to Springfield, passing it around. Apodaca holding on to it, running down that puck again. Nine and a half to play. Point blank by Springfield. Probably should have taken it strong to the rim, but since he didn't initially, kick it back out. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Jay Wright has coached a great game for the prime. Got him ready. Had him ready. Shot clock at four. Inside. Gittins called. The Gittins good inside for Bruno Gittins. Kevin, what it does defensively, it absolutely wears you out. The team gets it down, shot clock, maybe play defense for 30 seconds, and then either make a jump shot or lay it in. Barnes was going up on a shot, and he was swiped on the play by Greg Springfield. 8.56 to play. Springfield is tagged with his fourth personal foul. Steve Lavin watches from the side. Bruins come into today having lost two of three, but as a number four seed out of the Pac-10. Is it there again? Dan Zurich? It's Barnes at the free throw line. And UCLA now from the strike today has gone one of five. Now Barnes only a 58% free throw shoot. Has struggled all season long. Lars Vugler has checked in. And Springfield in some foul problems. It's the Hofstra bench. So Vugler, Hernandez, Epideka, Gittins, along with Richardson out there for the Hofstra club. UCLA with Knight, Capono, Barnes, Watson, and Dan Ganser. Kevin, every possession, though, UCLA has to play defense. 25, 30 seconds. The Hawks for the win, what they have to do is then knock in shots and then wear this UCLA team down. Apodaca inside on Capono, missing everything in the rebound by Gadzura. Watson takes it in. Here comes Knight, slithering his way around the defense of Apodaca, hitting a two-point shot and bringing the Bruins to within one. We have such a soft shot. He started the last 11 ball games. Bruins 9-2 and two in that stretch. Began at Stanford. UCLA is on a 7-2 run right now. But just the small tweak of coming out and forcing action has changed UCLA. Well, and they challenge every shot. No open look so far the second half by Hopson. Dancing is Hernandez. And it knocked away shot inside by five. Barnes. At the other end, Knight tries to save it. Back in play, Gatzurik goes hurtling out of bounds. A shot clock by Shot Ellison. clock went off, so they're going to, UCLA will keep that ball. They never had possession of it. Jay Wright's trying to, trying to say that possession as he saved it. UCLA is starting to show more hustle. They've trailed most of the game. Jay Wright and Hofstra leading still by a point. Creighton has scored. Backdoor Smith, bounce pass Evans. Gathers himself, bends off the defender, and banks it home. And that has been a big part of the Iowa offense here in this stretch. They've been able to find Evans inside. Sears, the pipe run. Once again, the penetration draws the defense, and Evans this time catches the ball, the good head fake, and then a very nice job with the pivot, getting the ball to go in the basket. Of course, uses that big arm to ward pipe from away. That's called a meat hook. <laughs> pipe from gets the first to go. CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Let's take a look. Free throw shooting. Creighton going to the line only seven times. Iowa 17 of 21 
For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. And the reason you have numbers like that, Gus, Iowa has really been trying hard to attack inside, and Creighton has basically been out on the perimeter, missed a lot of three-point shots. You don't draw a lot of fouls when you're shooting threes. Meanwhile, let's get an update on Ben Walker from Dwayne Ballin. Gus, Ben Walker dislocated, he thinks, a finger on his right hand. It opened up, there was bleeding, so his hand, with his fingers were taped, and he's back in the game, obviously, and he's feeling okay right now, other than that. Wow. Well, that is a football player's mentality. Dislocated fingers, tape them up, and get him back out there. And they really need his intensity in there. Only a six-point game. Sears takes a three, and air ball. Taylor swoops in and gets the rebound. Sears was looking for the foul on that play. Gus sort of kicked his feet out and was falling down, shooting the three. Back door, block, out of bounds. And we got a foul call. Both teams over the limit. Creighton was able to get some inside baskets early. That wasn't a block. That just slipped out of Sears' hands. And earlier in the game, Gus, we saw Walker lose one going up to shoot the ball. It just flew out the back. And he lost it out of bounds. So Creighton having a tough time hanging on to the ball. And a lot of times, those brand-new basketballs can be really slick because they haven't been worn. No tack on them at all. Hadn't bothered Iowa, though. And now you're getting that Iowa inside strength. There you get a good look at the basketball. But Evans is in double figures. Henderson's in double figures. Worley's in double figures. Steve Alford said going into halftime they wanted to attack inside, and they've done that very successfully in the second half. 11-1 run for the Hawkeyes as we approach the two-minute mark of the second half. Computing solution. The bracket here in the East, first and second round action. In Long Island, New York, Kentucky advances, defeating Holy Cross. Station Prince with 27. They'll take on the winner of this one. Later on, BC and Southern Utah. And UC, USC and Oklahoma State in the nightcap. Corver. Gus, keep in mind that even though Creighton has not shot the ball particularly well from three point, the three-point line today, they are a team that is capable of shooting the three, so they are not out of this one by any means. Creighton, 5 of 26 from the three-point line this afternoon. 58-52, they're only down by six. Here's a full-court press. And now they're looking for some turnovers. Oliver, quickly. Corver gets a hand on it. Now Worley backs it up and a whistle. Klein just dropping Reggie Evans. Evan Jones playing with four. Can they even get it in bounds? Again, they're trying to foul here to get that ball back. That's seven, so they've used up those two fouls to force the bonus. Which uh, then gives them hope of uh, missed free throws and uh, added possessions. It, it was a good decision by Georgia Tech to put Reed on the line. Not that he's a horrendous foul shooter, but as soon as a big man catches the ball, put him on the line as opposed to Nelson and O'Connor. Well, there's the break that Georgia Tech needed, trailing 63-60. Within one of their specialties, a tray of a tie. But they just have not been able to hit from outside. Aikens takes it in deep. And the rebound to Nelson, and he's fouled by LaBerry. Well, they had to do that foul. Aikens and Jones. Jones, the senior, the leader, one of five seniors on this squad. Tony Aikens, just a junior. These have been the key guys for Paul Hewitt all season. How fitting and appropriate that they had the real chance to close it to within one. Couldn't get it done, though. But that's all you want, really, is a chance. To the line for St. Joseph's, their best free throw shooter, the freshman Jameer Nelson at 82%. Missed only uh, 22 of 124 on the season. 48 seconds to go. Oh, my. And LaBerry right there as he's been the entire second half. A couple of 
front ends, free throws missed by St. Joe's, giving Georgia Tech life again. The crowd surging toward the court, over the top. And Jones can't hit the slam, and it's picked up by Nelson, he's fouled. Georgia Tech with the game on the line. Alvin Jones misses the slam dunk. Arguably a foul on the play here. Over the top, that's got to be oh, a foul. Yeah. And then Halston Lane should have made that dunk anyway, as big and as strong as Alvin Jones is. Yeah, no question there was a foul not called, and Alvin Jones with that appealing look, but, but it's, it's, it's been Jones. called. It's been called. They're not going to change it. So Georgia Tech has got to get right back in there. The, the hard foul by Phillips across the, the arm, the body, the face. Here, just under 30 seconds in San Diego and St. Joseph's of Pennsylvania with a 63-60 lead. Georgia Tech has had three opportunities to tie here in the final minute and a half and have been denied. And now the foul sends freshman Jameer Nelson of the Hawks of St. Joseph to the line with 29.7 seconds remaining. The winner to meet Stanford, the UNC Greensboro game. That winner in the next round. Freshman Jameer Nelson hits two free throws. St. Joseph's takes a 65-60 lead with 29.7 seconds to go in San Diego. Cross court to Jason Smith. Well, that's a nice job to move the ball. What you want to do now is keep the ball moving so they can't foul you. And a foul, Henderson. Foul by Sears. You know, four days ago, the Iowa Hawkeyes ended a terrific run through the Big Ten tournament by defeating Indiana in the championship game. Iowa's Reggie Evans blocked a three-point attempt by Kirk Haston in the final seconds, giving the Hawkeyes their first Big Ten title since sharing the regular season crown in 79. Iowa won four games in four days by an average of 12 points. Trail by five with uh, 29 seconds to go. Now it's Tony Aiken's time with the ball. This has been their best player. St. Joe should take the ball out of his hand with a good double team, but they can't do it. Aikens gets his own rebound. Hit the other side of the rim. LaBerry follows. It's 65-62. Timeout Georgia Tech with 15 seconds to go. Back out, across the lane, in traffic. Rebound by Dan Zurich. He picks up his seventh rebound of the day. 13 points by Earl Watson leads the Bruins in scoring. A couple players with 12 apiece. Knight, Dan Zurich. Now yeah, expect Capono too to become more involved. I think the last five minutes here. Great move inside. A sensational move by Barnes. Barnes is so tough when he gets. Oh. You know, Eddie can take the bump. He can still finish the play. Strong enough. Four and a half left. Many turnovers for Hofstra. Most have come in the second half, and only 11. Pro shooter. Well, Jameer Nelson, the best freshman in St. Joe's history. They call him the kid. He has started since he set foot on the campus there at St. Joe's, which is at 54th and City Line Avenue, right across the street from Lower Marion Township High School, where Kobe Bryant went to high school. But the thing about Jermaine Nelson, that makes it a two uh, possession game, Bill, 66-62. The leadership that he shows. The competitive greatness, very mature for just 19 years of age. Phil Martelli telling us before the game that he's 19-year-old body and a 75-year-old brain. Misses the second one. Oh, 66-62, under 10 seconds. 
Aiken from way outside. Fine to follow. He misses. Batted back out to Aikens. And the game is over. St. Joseph's and Phil Martelli advance to the second round. They beat Georgia Tech 66-62. Well, Phil Martelli down the stretch, led by his freshman Jameer Nelson, who scored 12 points, eight assists, seven rebounds. And Nelson, the young man from just outside Philadelphia, Chester, has delivered like the mature player that Martelli has praised. St. Joe's held on. They were dynamic in the first half, got too conservative in the second. That will not work as they go deeper into this tournament. They play the winner of Stanford UNC Greensboro. Leading scores in the game. Marvin O'Connor who averaged 21 and a half on the season comes home with 21 today and is a backcourt mate. Steve Alford was a player for St. Joe's as promised for Georgia Tech their leading score on the year Tony Aiken 16 and off the bench Daryl LaBerry with 15. And our Chevrolet players of the game Marvin O'Connor of St. Joseph's and Tony Aikens of Georgia Tech certainly the guards were the top players today Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and assist those in financial need. So our first game of four at Cox Arena in San Diego goes to St. Joe's of Pennsylvania 66 62 winner over Georgia Tech and we await the next game Stanford UNC Greensboro the winner of that to meet St. Joe's on Saturday and now let's go to Greg again Clark in New York. All right, Dick and Bill, thank you. So St. Joseph's a 66-62 winner over Georgia Tech. We said early on, Clark, that St. Joseph's came out an angry team, and they played it the whole game. They certainly Not now. You heard Steve Alford tell everybody he wants to talk about it. That's true. And Reggie Evans with another rebound. On the line is playing the UCLA Bruins, and the Bruins have grabbed the 53 to 48 lead. UCLA's offense, nice passing inside the Dan Gad Zurich, who will put the big dunk down, and the Bruins led early, but then fell behind Hofstra. Good ball control. Jason Hernandez brings it up. There's Norman Richardson. He's got the ball. There he's got the look, and he's got three. 38-34 Hofstra. This is a game between two hot teams. UCLA has won 17 of its last 21. Hofstra riding an 18-game winning streak. 3:07 to play. Let's send you to Greensboro Coliseum. Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold. Career, and these guys have done a great job helping get the Creighton Blue Jays to the NCAA tournament three years in a row now. Tough time today. Particularly after that, they jump into that, to that lead in the second half. Just not able to hold on, but doesn't diminish the kind of season they've had, the kind of careers they've had. 18 seconds to play, and the Iowa Hawkeyes will advance. Steve Alford ready to make the walk and shake hands with Dana Altman. They do. Five seconds to go as Oliver dribbles out the time. And Iowa comes back, defeats great 69 to 56, and it will be Kentucky and Iowa in the next round. A look at the bracket here in the East. Iowa and Kentucky, a two versus a seven in the second round, and the Chevrolet most valuable players, Ben Walker, 11 points, Dean Oliver, 15 and six. Now let's go to Greg Gumbel standing by in New York. All right, Gus, so the Iowa Hawkeyes salvaged something for the Big Ten today. After two Big Ten teams have lost, Iowa pulls off a 69-56 win over Creighton. In Greensboro, Hofstra and UCLA, 205 and counting to play. Let's send you there and join Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold. Fourth seed UCLA trailed a good portion of this game to 13th seeded Hofstra. 
seven threes in the first half by the Pride. Put them on top. But UCLA has been far more aggressive with defense. They've hit their shots. That's the lead at 55 48. And now again, Bruins more patient on the offensive end. It's been the Earl Watson show all afternoon long. Watson with 15 outside. Japon for three. And Zurich climbs inside and puts it down. Oh, what a play by Dan Ganser. The rebound. And then the two. And then. Makes it a 20 to 5 UCLA run. Well, got Zurich over the top and the finish. Emotion from this Bruins squad. UCLA has grabbed this game by the throat and squeezed. The other way. Well, Maryland's running that that run and jump defense, and they're getting the traps high. At the half court, and George Mason is not able to get into their offense right now. Blake able to push it up the court, hits the jumper. Maryland's playing their game right now. A lot of people might think that the shot Blake just took, not a good shot, but it was with it. UCLA with their biggest lead today, 57-48. Kevin Harlan, John Symbol, and Charles Davis here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Three point shooting for Hofstra. It's been good. But UCLA, what you don't see there is the defense that they have exhibited in the second half with some nice halftime adjustments from Coach Steve Lamb. We have points in the paint 36 to 9. Defensively, UCLA really shut off the interior. Hofstra had to shoot jump shots second half, as you mentioned. Steve Lavin, the adjustments, more aggressive in their half court sets. Hofstra, when they back it out and run the shot clock down, UCLA really attacked. They trapped, forced, to, forced Hofstra into Making a play with two or three seconds left on the shot clock. He's got Zurich. He threw up an air ball. He turned the uh, fans on down there. <laughs> Should not happen, huh? 130 to play in the second half. But he's been playing hard. Get Zurich has had a solid game with 14 points and 12 rebounds. Full court pressure again. The energy of UCLA has been the second half difference. It has forced everything about Hofstra to go off kilter. Full court press has affected them. Half court offense has been met at every turn with the closed door. And Jay Wright, who saw so many openings for his pride in the first half, has seen no openings in the second. Myers called on Knight, picks up his third for UCLA. Well, now you have to be in a hurry if you're hostile. 115 left. There's one of the first open looks they've had in the second half. A good look. Richardson with the miss, and he got a good screen to set that up. That comes out to Daka. Back to Richardson for three, missing everything there, and caught by Barnes. Well, now it's keep away time. This Bruin ball club, good comeback. Looked like they were on the ropes. They're down by six. The lead now, 57 to 48. And CBS Sportsline stand of the game. Points in the paint. Complete domination by the Bruins. And for complete tournament coverage, CBS.sportsline.com. Yeah, Dan Gedzerk, 14 points, 12 rebounds. Earl Watson, terrific from the start. 15 points, 7 assists. Jason Capono has been quiet this afternoon. Six points. They can advance and get his game back on where they need it. Picked up by Capona. Firing a three off balance. The shooting percentage now of Hofstra has dipped to 36%. They were one time 7 of 14 shooting threes. They're 3 of 10 shooting threes in this second half. Hofstra has gone one of their last 13 from the field. Wondering if the long climb back and all that energy that UCLA was expending was going to make them tire down the stretch, but they have seemed to gain energy and gain momentum as the game has gone on as they're putting away the 13th seeded Hofstra Pride. With each steal or with each missed shot by this Pride Ball Club, UCLA seemed to have more energy. And Earl Watson, the senior, you know what? He just kind of took the teammates on his back for a while. He was the one that. Make sure everybody else 
but they stayed close until everybody else found their game. Off the back on the perimeter, feeding to Richardson, who works over Watson with a three, another miss. Rebound by Gad Zurich, and UCLA will advance. As their second half was mighty impressive. And after the start today in this tournament, survive and move on, huh? Survive and move on. UCLA will play Utah State on Saturday here in Greensboro, and the Bruins win their 10th game in their last 12. A 20 to three run ends the game for Steve Lavin's UCLA Bruins. Hofstra did not score from the field over the last nine minutes and three seconds. So we've had one upset here today, and that was 12 seeded Utah State. We will now take on UCLA on Saturday. Tonight, top seed Duke against Monmouth, and a good 8 9 matchup Georgia against Missouri. Players of the game. Jason Hernandez with 11 points and six assists. Earl Watson for UCLA, who began the game six of six from the field. Now for John Sunbold and Charles Davis. Kevin Harlan saying so long from Greensboro. As we send it to our CBS studios in New York, Clark Kellogg joined by Greg Gumbel. All right, Kevin, thank you. So the UCLA Bruins snap Hofstra's 18-game winning streak and bring their season to an end as well. In Boise, Idaho, seven minutes to play. Maryland with a one-point lead on George Mason. Let's take you to the VSU Pavilion. Craig Bowlerjack and James Worthy. 7.09 left here in Boise. Maryland and George Mason. The Terrapins lead by one. George Mason had a three point lead at the half 36 33 has been a game George Evans will remember 24 points for the Patriots while Byron Mouton has thrown down 20 for the Terrapins Dixon left hand wouldn't go follow shot off the rim Anderson rebounds and here comes Heron across midcourt in a game of control who can control the tempo in the first half George Mason was able to do it with the inside play of Evans in the second half Maryland has been able to pick up the pace with their aggressive trapping defense but still only a one point lead for the Turtles. George Mason the 14th seed in the West against the third seed Maryland Terrapins Evans 30 years of age spent seven years in the Army a terrific player in the Colonial Athletic Association. Blake has it, nice feet down low. Shot wouldn't go, the follow wouldn't go by Morris. And Young rebounds for George Mason. The Jesse Young, James in my book today, he's got 11 points, but he's done a lot of dirty work. He's done a lot of things that are show up in the intangible category. I mean, he's. He shut Terrence Morris down. I mean, Terrence Morris hadn't been a factor. He's gotten some strong offensive boards, hit his free throws, and just been extremely active. And there he is again. Well, the triple team on Evans and able to break out on the baseline was Young and a whistle. And the take on, on, on Jesse Young is that he's been a little soft in physical games. Not today. He's been very active, very strong to the basket. You take a look at the game summary. Well, that's even. I mean, that is even. 55% for George Mason from the floor, Maryland. 54 turnovers even. Young knocks down the first one to tie it up. Last foul was on Mouton, and that is his four. Mouton picked up the foul. And that's going to be four. Um, Byron Mouton has to take a seat with 20 points. Second shot off the mark. Holden has it. For Maryland. Blake spots up. Too strong. Young, another board. To me, you're right. Young has been the most valuable player for, for George Mason behind George Evans. I mean, he's been a guy that we didn't expect to have this kind of impact. Three pointer. Too strong. Evans. Kicks to Young, back out to Evans. Laranega 
Good patience and a fresh 35 on the shot clock. See, Evans got that rebound. He was nine feet from the bucket, but he won't shoot a shot that's uncomfortable or out of his game. Loose ball picked up by Maryland. Here comes Blake across midcourt. Three-pointer. Short Price, the little guy for George Mason. 5'8". Like a bulldog running through there. 70-70. Under five minutes left to Herring. Puts it on the floor, backs in, loose ball. Save. Nope, stepped out of bounds. Maryland might be one of the best teams at getting their hands on the ball while the shot's going up. They are reaching in on just about every single shot and pass. Gary Williams wearing a groove on that sideline. 12th season in College Park. 11th ranked in both polls. And James Maryland is one of 12 schools to be ranked in the top 25 from start to finish. They had a little slide midseason, but I have to say, this is a team, the Maryland Turpins, that can play with anybody in the country. Great player in Dixon. Morris, who hadn't been effective tonight. Wilcox, big inside with Lonnie Baxter. They're big and they're small enough to mix it up with most teams. Whistle inside, away from the ball. And that goes against Evans. And that's going to be four on George, on George Evans. Evans. Check that three. On the Patriots. 24 points for Evans. A three-time Colonial Athletic Association Player of the Year. Three in a row. The only other player? David Robinson did it in 85, 86, 87. Shooting one more. A little surprise, but the referee thinks otherwise. Holden with his third point. You look at the brackets, Georgia State led by Lefty Drizel already beating the sixth seed in the West, Wisconsin. And the winner of this game will get to play Georgia State on Saturday and the anticipation of Georgia State playing Lefty Giselle's former school Maryland and don't Once forget yeah, Lefty Lefty was in College Park for a long time 1970 to 1986 like a blocking foul but interest interestingly enough Craig you know, you may have some fans from Maryland who might forget that Lefty is not their coach anymore and may pull for George, Georgia State on a few occasions. Eighth straight, a tournament appearance for Gary Williams and the Terrapins. And the first shot finds its uh, way down for Herring. And coming up next, for those of you awaiting UNC Greensboro against the number one seed Stanford Cardinal, we'll get you onto that game here momentarily. Both shots fall down. Herring with 13 and a timeout in Boise. 72-72, George Mason of Maryland. Three fifty-two left here in Boise. 72 all. George Mason of Maryland. Double bonus situation for both teams. Timeouts, two apiece, and the possession arrow belongs to Maryland. And you know, we mentioned at the beginning of the second half that Maryland's only come back from a deficit only once, and that was at Duke. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, if they're capable of, of, of planning a close game like this. It was very rare this season for Maryland to trail at the half. They did here in Boise only the fifth time as the whistle. Dixon after the shot. And when you're a team that's, you know, not used to coming from behind, when you're used to being out with big leads, jumping out and, and putting up big spurts, it could be difficult when you get in a big game, a close game, coming from behind. Dixon with the first was 17. And Wednesday here on CBS, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, Big Apple. One of the hottest shows around that's right here on CBS. Dixon makes his second. For the four foot pressure, but George Mason has handled the pressure well today. Five ties, look at that, James. Ten lead changes. 
Yeah, they'll be looking for Herring or Evans. Herring's doing a good job running the baseline, coming off those picks from. Herring drove baseline, now they feed Evans. Put it on the floor, and a whistle. Very quick. He puts that pivot foot, and he'll just jump. Well, the beauty of Evans' games is, you know, he'll go to every gear. One possession, he'll give you first and second gear. Lure you to sleep. The second possession, you know, he'll, he'll go medium speed. And all of a sudden, he'll make a quick spin move, as he did there. And caught the defense off guard. Knocks down the free throw, 25 for George Evans. We talked so much about his military career. You have to go back, you know, he played Army basketball, Aberdeen Army base in Maryland. His last year on the base, James, about 40 points, 18 rebounds. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's also one of just one of four players in NCAA history to record more than 200 steals, assists, and block shots for a career. Joining former Kansas star Danny Manning, LaSalle standout Lionel Simmons, and the current Duke star Shane Battier. So he's pretty good company. Pretty good company and some pretty good stats. From the corner, short. Over the back with no call. Blake reached over uh, Price. But I got to tell you, this game is, in my opinion, it's right for the taking for George Mason. You know, Maryland's expected to win. They're not up. George Mason is executing. Big shot by Heron. Two-pointer. 15 for Heron out of Chicago. Now, this is when the wrists get a little tight. You're the team that's supposed to be up and winning. Gary Williams taking a timeout. A lot of indecision and uncertainty on this Maryland ball club right now. Two minutes left. Herring with a good look. Sinks it in Boise. Welcome back into Boise. Maryland, one of the hotter teams coming down the stretch run of the season. They won at Wake Forest, knocked off North Carolina State, Oklahoma, at Duke, Virginia, Wake Forest, and then nearly got Duke again in the ACC semifinals, but lost by two. And right now, in trouble of maybe being knocked out of this tournament. Well, you want to talk about incentive for George Mason. The big picture now. Everyone anticipating the, the game between Georgia State and Maryland. They expected Georgia State to win, but George Mason says, look, we have something to say about that. Incentive. And so far, they've showed it here this afternoon. Harry picks up the foul. That's going to be three on Herring and Dixon at the free throw line. Can never afford to look past any opponent. I don't care if you won seed and 16 seeds. You don't look past an opponent in the NCAA tournament because there's no tomorrow. Maryland as a team, 19 of 20 from the free throw line. Now 20 of 21 and a 20 point game for Dixon. I'd look for for Herring once again. Maryland 0-5 record in games decided by three points or less. So, you know, when you, when you think of that stat, when you look at the way George Mason has handled the pressure and, and they're executing well, this game is right there for George Mason. Patience by the Patriots in the corner back up. Price thought about the three. Oh, Traffic flies down. by, pumps it up. No. Guess who? Evans! Count it! Has been burned by George Evans. Amazon Terrence Moore, second person. Well, Craig, that's just smart experience. He knew the shot was going up. Right now, he's in their fighting position. He gets the inside position, and from there, George between Mars and Holden, they couldn't, couldn't stop it. Three-point try. Rims out. The foul was on Morris, his second. George Mason by one. 105 left. Now the rim gets a little bit smaller now. You got to knock down a bucket. That rim can't get smaller. Oh, that got big for Blake. He must have been listening to me. In fact, he's been a sharp shooter most of the game. He's hit some big buckets, not afraid to take the shot. Blake with 13. Maryland by two under a minute left. Evans. To Laranega, ball stripped, loose. 
And then Larinaga reaches in and fouls Mouton. You have to be aware of Maryland. They do a great job as we look at Evans on the floor. Injured a little bit. Yeah, shaken up. But Maryland does a great job of getting their hands on the basketball. A terrific player George in George Evans, Evans being looked at with 27 points. That was the fifth foul on Larinaga, so he's out. Rob Anderson well, will be checking into the lineup. If you look in the middle of the lane, you're going to see Evans going down to set a pick and runs into, I'm not sure who the Maryland player is, but he runs into a Maryland player and gets hit in the stomach a little bit. With an elbow. Now, I don't know whether that that means he got the wind knocked out of him or whether it was around the rib area, but you see right there, he runs right into the elbow, right into the rib cage. And that's how you that's how you crack ribs, and, and I've had that before, and it's just very painful. He got a good sharp elbow right into the midsection below the rib cage. And uh, he's a strong man, so you know he took a, a you know a big hit to have him down still. Evans averaging just under 19 points a game this season. His Rock Maryland for 27. You know, he told us once, James, that what he's been through, and he's trying to downplay this too in his life as he's turned 30 back on January 31st. Yeah, he spent seven years in the Army, Haiti, the Persian Gulf, Belgium. But he says, you know what? Basketball, nothing like it is out there when you're looking at war. Let's go to Bob Winslow. Bob. Well, what we have here is a situation where he has to come out of the game because he, he stopped the game with this injury. The trainer came out, so he has to go to the bench and come out. It's crucial with 42 seconds left to go. Larinaga could call timeout and get him back in, but he's not going to do that. He needs to get Evans back in the game as soon as possible if he's okay. I'll find out if he's okay in one moment. And the thing is, a lot of cases, you know, when you have a situation like that, when a player has to go out of the game, you know, you would commit a quick foul and maybe get him back in. But both teams in the penalty, you cannot do that. 42 seconds left in the game. There's no guarantee when you're going to get him back in the ball game. He's trying to regain his breath. Mouton at the free throw line to shoot a pair. Big make. Mouton with 21 points. And here comes George Evans. Didn't stay down long. Mouton, by the way, James perfect from the free throw line, 8 of 8. 9 of 9. And they will not have Evans come in. The clock did not move. Price now calls a timeout. timeout. They want Evans in. George Mason. Can't blame him for that. We'll take a break. Maryland by four in Boise. The real keys for Greensboro here. Get out in transition, but that's going to mean they're going to have to control the boards. Then use the quickness on the perimeter. That's the real strength of the Spartan squad, and you've got to contain the Twin Towers, Jaron and Jason Collins. Eldridge takes it inside. The Jameson with 15 on the clock. Delivered half-court offense for the Spartans early on. Eldridge in deep and Shook with a rebound. Rips it away for a second chance. Can't score. Pop misses the tip and finally. Third body to the hole. Oh, looked like maybe pulled a hip. He's going to have to take a knee. Boy, they grabbed the back of his back on the right side after the drive. Well, you know, there's an area right there above the hip that really hurts if, you, if you're getting hit in that little bony area. And right there, it looks like he may have gotten a slight bump in the back as he grabs hold of that right high back area. Juan Dixon picked up the foul, his third. Herring now with... 18 points, 6 of 13 from the floor. Now, if from the free throw line. If there's any pain now, this free throw could be big, but he knocks it down. 5 of 5 for Herring. 
19. 81 80 Maryland. And they're free throw shooting. Whoever wins this game, if the Terrapins pull this out, they'll go back and look at 96% from the line, 22 of 23. Their season average 69. And that's an incredible fact right there. And you need free throws at this stage of the tournament and in the NCAA tournament because teams scout you. They know what you do, and a lot of times they have a tendency to take away some of your strengths. George Mason has taken away Baxter pretty much. They've taken Morris out of the game. But the free throws have kept Maryland up and afloat. Big miss. With the exception of that big miss by Morris. And now, Morris has not been involved in the game at all today. So it doesn't surprise me that he misses a free throw. His energy hadn't been there. Missed them both! George Mason basketball. He was perfect four for four when he towed the line and he missed both opportunities and now a timeout. A timeout in Boise. 81-80 Maryland. That was a final timeout for Maryland. George Mason still with one remaining. Possession arrow could play a factor pointing down to the Terrapins. Well, I think the strategy will be to look for the last shot. With 26 seconds left, Morris missed two free throws in a row. George Mason got the rebound. They have really played their game to the T this afternoon. They've kept Maryland close. Maryland has not been able to run the basketball as much. And right now, this could be a huge upset now, in the making. And James, you know Gary Williams is telling his players, George Evans, George Evans, George Evans. But don't forget, sometimes Eric Herring gets lost in this in this big picture and how much pressure they put on Evans. He draws a lot of double teams, and many times Herring will just jump out well, and get a good look. He's at 19 points in this game. And the last three or four possessions, they have looked for Eric Herring on the left side of the wing. That's where he likes to get it. Evans will roll out. And Heron will ISO, so it'll be really interesting to see who they go to here now. Price bounces to Herring. One thing they have to watch out for, Maryland has created some turnovers. They get their hand in on most balls, so you have to take care of the basketball, and they are looking for Evans R. Last touch by Evans. It's going to be Maryland basketball. Maryland ball. With six seconds left. Timeout, Patriots. And a timeout. Patriots call timeout. Six seconds to go. Well, this pass will come right at you. And it, you know what, James? It never touched Evans, but still, out of bounds, George Mason went right between his legs. Went right between his legs, and George Mason wanted to say that there may have been a slight deflection of the ball before it went through Evans' legs, but not so. And that is heartbreaking to have an opportunity to put the Terrapins away and not be able to get a shot off. I would expect them to put the ball in Eric Herron's hands and just let him ISO from a 1-4 format. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Terrence Morris will inbound to Dixon. And a quick foul. A whistle. Foul number 44, Eric Herring. Fourth personal. Now Morris, remember, last trip down missed the free throws. This time it's going to be one Dixon. And Dixon has been perfect. Five of five, 20 points. The game on the line, 4.9 seconds, though. I've seen some, some big misses by some really good free throw shooters. Dixon sinks the first for 21 points. Right now, a two-point game. George Mason still, though. Dixon can make this free throw. It'd be a three-point game. Rims it around and in. 22. And pushing it up. Three seconds left. Price at the buzzer, and Maryland advances on to round two to take on the former Maryland head coach, Lefty Drizel.
83-80. What a battle between the ACC and the Colonial Athletic Association, Maryland and George Mason. And I gotta tell you, Craig, what an opportunity slipped away from George Mason on a turnover. The last possession, you're gonna see Price coming up, really doesn't get close enough to the arc. I thought maybe he could have taken one more dribble, but that calf is bothering you him. Know, He's still James, down. you're right. He's you know, still down. That is right, he is still down. And you look at the emotion. Oh, it wore out Gary Williams. A lot of emotion in this game in Boise. Well, he knows he got away with one here this afternoon. George Mason had an opportunity to put his team away, but the turnovers, one by Larinaga early, and then the one by Evans. So Maryland moves on to play Georgia State, and the head coach, the former Terp, Lefty Drizel. And our Chevrolet players of the game for George Mason. George Evans, 27 points, 10 of 15 from the floor. Brian Mouton, 22 points for Maryland. So the final again, Maryland 83, 80 over George Mason. Let's go back to New York City, and here's Greg Gumbel. All right, Craig, thanks very much. So Maryland moves on with a three-point victory over George Mason. I wish you could have seen Mr. Kellogg here in the studio screaming to pressure the dribbler on the inbound. Really? I mean, you've got an opportunity to not allow a guy to get into a rhythm on the shot with four and a half seconds to go, and they were backing off, obviously afraid to foul. But Maryland fought a game George Mason team. Give them a lot of credit, and Maryland found a way. Great free throw shooting was the difference. There is another game underway right now in San Diego in the West Region. UNC, Greensboro, and Stanford are just underway in the first half and in the Cardinal with a two-point lead on UNC, Greensboro. Also today in the East Region, Hofstra's 18-game winning streak snapped by UCLA. 61-48 was the final score. UCLA outscored Hofstra 24-5 over the last 12 and a half minutes. A final in the East in Uniondale. The Iowa Hawkeyes, 69-56 winners over the Creighton Blue Jays. Iowa, the only victory by a Big Ten team today. The West Region game in San Diego today. St. Joe's over Georgia Tech, 66-62. The winner, that, that game, St. Joe's plays the winner of Stanford and UNC Greensboro. West Regional action in Boise. Georgia State by one over the Badgers of Wisconsin. Lefty Drizel's team moves on to meet Maryland. In East Regional play in Greensboro, Utah State over the Ohio State Buckeyes, 77 to 68 in overtime. And in the East Region in Uniondale, Holy Cross falls to the Kentucky Wildcats. The Wildcats win it by a score of 72 to 68. We will see you again primetime coming up 7.30 Eastern time this evening. Until then, have yourselves a good evening. We'll see you later.